Hello to all friends and fans of the pulp, paper and bioproducts industries. Welcome to our exciting Spectrum podcast, where we'll be talking about smart services from Andritz. Basically an ingenious, innovative and intelligent way to add value to operations by using the latest in digital technology. I am Mark Rushton and I will be your host. There is a saying that it's only when they go wrong that machines remind you how powerful they are. And this is so true when relating to production in pulp and paper manufacturing. You really do not want those machines to go wrong at any time. Andritz has created smart services to avoid such eventualities occurring in the first place, as well as many other smart tools for improving efficiencies at pulp and paper mills. So today I'm delighted to welcome Christina Mateka, Head of Smart Services at Andritz, who's going to tell us what it takes for equipment or service to become smart. Welcome, Christina. Great to have you with us. Hello, Mark. Exciting being your guest today. Let's get straight into the questions and find out all about smart services. So um, the introduction of digitization into services has meant a huge evolution in what can be offered to customers. Can you please give us an overview of smart services and what it means to pulp and paper producers? Sure. I think first it's necessary to create a common understanding about the question, how can a service be smart? Because when we think about the term service, We first think about human beings like field service workers with their screwdrivers directly at the customer's side. And secondly, the interaction between the customer and Android. That means the customer calls Android via his phone to come over here and we have to do some work, for instance, maintenance, or we have to fix a problem directly on his machine. And uh, thirdly, with this term service, um, it triggers uh, um, action in a very retrospective um, view. That means um, we understand as a service a classical process of a customer relationship. That means the customer has to call and react proactively based on an issue which occurs or has may already happened or it's predictable to occur, and then he contacts Andritz. So this is, um, I think, the common understanding of the term service. But let's think about the next level of doing services. And imagine here a machine. A machine is that intelligent and could reflect the current condition based on their collected data via sensors. And the machine could analyze uh, this data and detect, um, let's say, unusual behavior. That means could be a bad performance or even a too high utility consumption. So based on that analysis, the machine um, decided automatically to order a field service technician to come on site and fix this problem. So bring back the performance on track. And here is the word automatically. So um, to sum up this complex topic um, in one sentence, a service is automatically triggered by the intelligence of a machine. And this is a so-called smart service. So you see, basis for a smart service is always a smart product. That means the intelligence of a single component is a precondition. And this is the first barrier where some customers in the pulp and paper industry struggle already. How to get my equipment smart? What should I do with all that collected data and which information can I derive out of it and display it, for instance, as an overview in a dashboard? So there we have a lot of suitable solutions in our Android's digitalization portfolio. How the respective service is finally executed could be digitally or manually or even 
both in a combination. This depends on the use case and the respective incident. But in which way ever we do service, it is a promise to our customers that they obtain the best performance we can give them, digitally or manually. Wow. Thank you for your very comprehensive answer there. Clearly, we're a, a lot further away from that guy with the screwdriver that came around every you know, couple of months or when something broke down. It's really good to see that that, uh, that digital intelligence is, is actually you know, permeating into real-life scenarios now. So when talking about the pulp and paper industry specifically, can you paint us a picture by giving an example of how things have changed? a sort of before and after scenario um, to how things have evolved? Sure. Um, it is said that smart services um, are known to include at least four major focus areas. We all have heard about them. So one is predictive maintenance, remote services, platforms, and even process optimization. Major characteristics of smart services are attitudes like proactive, preventive, but more preemptive. That means sudden service will be provided automatically before the issue occurs, caused by the intelligence of the machine or the system, and reflects the highest maturity of a service based on the data. So you can imagine that this scenario opens up a lot of opportunities and will affect definitely the way of interacting with our customers on a new level. But it also has to be said that both sides must be ready also to open up and increase transparency because this is a complete new and of course unknown way of cooperating with each other and also interacting together. And the precondition is always here also um, on safety and trust. So the question is, why not to combine both experts' know-hows, where everybody creates the optimum benefits and efficiency out of service business? Think back of the time of COVID. You remember the travel restrictions and um, almost nobody, also from our side, couldn't travel to even start up a machine or commissioning a mill. But the good thing is we were ready and we were prepared with our technical tools also here to serve the customer digitally and remotely. And this is um, the attribute of being preemptive. Honestly, it was a very strange situation also to our people because we have to get trained to also to use such remote tools and how to communicate with them. Don't forget about our customers. They also needed to be trained on such tools. So you see, we all learn together jointly doing services digitally. Today, it's quite common already to provide such remote services as a standard in our proposals to our customers when they decide to buy equipment and service from Android's. That's excellent. Thank you. I mean, I, I think you're, you're absolutely right. I think we all learned a lot during the COVID times, particularly about digital communications. And, and in some ways, it was, dare I say, in some ways, it was quite a good thing to happen because it sort of sped things along. And now we... We've got to a position now where, you know, we're using it all the time in our everyday lives, which is a positive thing. I just want to go back on one of the things that you said there, which is um, major characteristics of smart services are attitudes like proactive, preventative, and more preemptive, which, which makes sense. And then you said that means that sudden service will be provided automatically. Can you tell us what that actually means? I mean, does that mean that someone's going to knock on your door with a screwdriver and fix it? Or how is it going to actually, is it going to be remotely fixed? Or how does that work, that sudden service? I mean, in case of remote services, we have a very practical example. Um, this was uh, also some kind of our first baby in the smart service box because it was uh, somehow given with regard to remote service, we have installed, I think, three years ago, a so-called performance center. That means this is a dedicated and close and safe room where we can really execute such remote services. 
remote service is um, split into uh, focus areas. That means we provide remote support. Remote support means that we connect um, via our performance center and the given software tools and hardware tools as well into the DCS system of the customer. That means we are um, supporting process-wise. And the other focus area of remote services is the remote assistance. That means this is a more communicative way to support the customer. In case of um, urgent calls, troubleshootings, we are able not only to serve the customer via the phone, we are also able to serve the customer visually. That means precondition for that is at least a mobile device where you can walk around, which uh, has a camera function and you can really um, catch the picture in real time. And we see what the customer sees and vice versa at the same time. So this is a very practical example. Of course, um, this also has a learning curve. Also, um, in the use of hardware tools, because um, it's we are not used to have something in front of our eyes. Yeah, you have a smartphone, but you don't have these hololenses. It's not, let's say, <laughs> in our daily business that we wear that. So we have to get used to and trained to that but also the customer. In these days, um, we are in that phase that this is, um, let's say, giveaway with each and every new order to the customer that he could sudden have access to our experts at home if he takes these HoloLenses and will be connected straight to the performance center to get help, support or information to any questions. Excellent. Thank you for that. Thanks. I think we're getting an idea of how practically it works and, and it's good if you can visualize it. And that's, in fact, it's actually, you are visualizing. I mean, you are, you're doing the visuals. We do visualizing. We also have other tools in the box, but we are um, at least um, serving to the four C's. That means content, context, commerce, and connection. So this is the, let's say, the rules for smart services. Excellent. So um, can you enlarge upon what else is in the box? Sure. I mean, you saw it already or heard it already. Smart service is not a standalone unit. So you cannot, let's say, sell smart services as a um, solely product. What that means, um, as I said before, um, we need at least data as a basis, as a precondition to do service. That means data of a machine or a process or even a dedicated customer as a persona. So this is information we get out of at least a, a platform or for analysis. And out of that, we um, make tailor-made individual solutions. This is a mission which we do together with Global Automation, the group IT and our all business areas so that we create together a digital service package here. So you see, this is a very collaborative approach to, let's say, propose service to our customers. And the good thing is, as we are as close as, as possible to our customer, we really hit or touch the real needs of the pulp and paper market and the customer. And of course, the users of our tools, because in this um, way, it's not always the same. So customer is not always the end user of such tools. So we have to catch the expectations, at least from both sides here. So Mark, you see smart service is only one part of the whole vision, which has hundreds for digitalization. And we are included in our digital solutions, which are summed up under one umbrella, and this is the brand Metris. And from this brand, we distinguish in digital products, in digital service and its tools, and also not to forget the respective business models, like equipment as a service, for instance. And if you ask for the toolbox, in general, I can say Andritz has a very large portfolio for Metris and the digital solutions, which are always in a valuable combination 
which are selected together with the customer dedicated for his specific purposes. Um, to mention maybe some other highlights in the box of smart service, we have touched the topic of remote assistance and respective supporting tools, which enables also to support the customer in an augmented reality. The benefit here is that you can really support the customer in the real time and from any geographical distance. A second thing is also the IoT platform. Um, we have there several apps which really fit in the needs which are necessary for data analytics, where we display the data um, and derive information out of them, but also simulation. Another thing is especially smart service box. Um, we have a platform for spare parts, for instance. Um, there we open up this, let's say, a new way of sales, of doing sales to our customers. But of course, there is more to come um, with progressing enabling technologies. And it's also necessary that we have here the increasing openness also from our customers that they are curious and they want to try out also new tools and doing also new way of services with us as a company. Okay, wow, Christina, there's a, a lot in that box, that's for sure. <laughs> there's no doubt about there's that. There's much more, but it, it's time consuming. <laughs> <laughs> and there's even more to come. But, sure. but ultimately, ultimately, what we're looking at really is, is what is Metra Smart Services actually offering customers in terms of added value? Where does the bottom line get affected? Where does the customer really have the dividends paid? I think the added value is well known also from our private life. And I also can express it here in a very generic way. Um, what is important and what is the added value to our customer? Of course, it's cost efficiency and improved performance. And this is also applicable on smart services because performance means that could be a piece of equipment which could be improved or a complete process of a mill. But also, not to forget, you can also improve your internal and external workflows. So you see the real potential for our customer and his benefits, which he expects, must be, of course, evaluated very individually. And this could be done together with him or her and our teams. Because we always consider here really the holistic life cycle and focus on the end-to-end -end approach. And the real benefit, at least, is a perfect match at the end together and generate the best results for both sides. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, um, you can really see the benefits and advantages of, uh, of the smart services and Metro smart services. Even. So um, always a, a big issue is cybersecurity. It's becoming more and more important, particularly when supplying digital services. Can you give us an overview about what measures Andritz has in place when it comes to cybersecurity? Sure. I mean, you read it every day, at least in the newspapers about cyber hacks or data leaks. And of course, for also for Andritz, uh, cybersecurity um, is a very topic to be taken seriously, um, not only for us internally as protection, but of course, also for our customers. And if you have such a strong focus on service digitalization as we have, I think it's mandatory and important for us that we also have to propose here safety packages to our customers and the end users. Together with the executive board, the Andritz IT and the global automation, we create programs which consist of a maximum of internal know-how and the most tailored support from external partners. And especially in the area of leading edge operational technology, so short OT, we rely on cybersecurity products and services from our experts from Autorio. What is Autorio? It is a dedicated company owned by Andritz, 
which provides uh, state-of-the-art cybersecurity IT services and products, which are available also to our pulp and paper customers. But also to us as internal users, we also have to ensure that the internal processes and procedures are safe as a precondition to be a trusted advisor to our customers. So therefore, also together with our internal managed security service providers, we accept this challenge and also provide here maximum safety to our own structures. And this also includes cybersecurity awareness trainings for our own employees. Um, we also test them with um, phishing simulations, penetration tests for every digital product and service, and um, all the way down to detailed incident response run books, which we test, of course, regularly. And all these services we also could provide to our customers. So this is possible because our mission for cybersecurity um, is clear. And if you want to have more information about the portfolio of Fotorio, you are highly welcome to visit our Andritz homepage. Great, Christina. It looks like you've really got the cybersecurity part of everything all um, pretty much under control, it seems. So now, moving forward, can you tell us uh, about any specific new projects that you're working on when it comes to ideas for Metris smart services? Yeah, Mark, of course, there is never a standstill. So this is a, we are in dynamic times and we are all at the beginning of a very exciting digital journey also with our customers. And so too are our developments. There are so many more opportunities we would like to develop and provide. And we will by going beyond our existing portfolio, but always with our customers in the central focus. Any kind of database solution will be considered if it's a convenient and secondly brings added value for our customers. And smart service will focus in the next years on improving communication and interaction between the company and our customers. So that means you will hear in due time about chatbots, self-service portals, new apps also on the IoT platform, and much more features for remote services. Wow, it seems to never stop, does it? No. <laughs> so you're already providing a lot, and then there's a lot more to come, which is very interesting and a, and a really amazing and dynamic area of the industry as it, as it really evolves into something special. So, um, Christina, in a nutshell, let's tell our listeners what Andritz can offer its customers when it comes to Metris smart services. So the mission for us is clear. Digitalization is a heavy strategic focus, not only for Androids globally, but especially also in the pulp and paper market. And um, with our brand portfolio of digital solutions, that means tools, services, and business models, Androids is absolutely the right partner for our customers to go together on this digital service journey. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Christina. So now I'm sure that you are all very curious about Metris Smart Services and I'm sure that you want to know more. To contact Andritz regarding the Metris Smart Services, please visit the show notes of this podcast where you will find an email address where you can contact Andritz people. Um, also, your Andritz contact person will be very happy to inform you about the possibilities of digital services. Review your current situation and figure out opportunities together christina it's been a pleasure to talk to you thank you so much we learned a lot there today we can see that there's always a potential to improve and doing services smarter so thank you very much thanks mark and i also have to confirm make services smart and not hard excellent thank you very much and thank you for listening to our podcast and goodbye goodbye goodbye